Yeah, this is the edge of the solar project site out here in the Mojave Desert. So they've built this tortoise exclusion fence here and the tortoise biologist that we saw earlier will just be covering this entire 3,000 acres with shovels, digging out every burrow they see, finding every tortoise, and then translocating them to a different part of the desert. And so this tortoise exclusion fence keeps the other tortoises from moving in to the construction zone. So they had to build a new road through this pristine desert, put in this fence, and then in fall, they'll bring in the heavy construction machinery and there won't be any more tortoises here. Like most people concerned about climate change, I have supported a transition to renewable energy as a solution. The desert, abundant with sun, seemed like a great place to do it. What they never told us was the vast amount of habitat that would need to be destroyed in the process. In Nevada alone, some 9 million acres of public land is now open to solar projects. Nor did they tell us about an explosive surge of mining needed for elements like copper, cobalt, lithium, to build solar, wind, and batteries. Nor did they tell us about the amount of fossil fuels they'd burn in construction, and the carbon they'd release into the air by destroying living ecosystems. We were told to believe gas and oil were the only problem, turns out destroying plant and animal life is equally catastrophic and contributes further to the climate crisis. After learning all of this, I began to realize we are witnessing an apocalypse of our Mojave and Great Basin deserts before our very eyes. Today we're visiting the um, approved right-of-way of the Yellow Pine Solar Energy Project. This is a 3,000 acre, um, 4.6 square mile, utility scale photovoltaic solar project. This area is called the South Pahrump Valley um, and it's a classic characteristic Mojave Desert habitat. We have opposed this project from the beginning ever since we heard about it. It got approved, unfortunately. Um, we just didn't have all the resources we needed to fight it. But um, we are monitoring it closely because they want to construct several other utility scale solar projects in this very area. Um, while Yellow Pine is 3,000 acres, we have calculated that up to um, 18,000 additional acres of utility scale solar could be built in the area because that's how much interest is, is located. This is the Yellow Pine solar project area. And came out here today to take some pictures of this vast landscape. Uh, it's in the Prump Valley. So I've lived in Nevada for 20 years. I come from Illinois, where there's forests and uh, you know lakes and rivers and things like that, grass, naturally. And out here, you know, when I first came here, it just seemed like kind of a barren wasteland. Um, you know, it looked like dirt with some weeds. That's essentially what I thought it was. Once you get out here and walk among these plants, you begin to see that there is a, a greater variety of plants here than there was back home in Illinois, back east. Uh, the biodiversity is amazing out here. The plant and animal species. So I just fell in love with the, the uh, Mojave yucca and the creosote, the Joshua tree, and you know the, the kit fox, the hawks, all the strange insects that are out here. So yeah, I've been uh, hiking and exploring the Mojave Desert. And you know, I started taking pictures with my phone and I decided one day that I was gonna get uh, a better camera. Got myself a, uh, a Canon DSLR and started taking landscape pictures, bought a better lens, 
Next thing you know, I'm doing photography professionally. Uh, I'm in film school right now, and because you know I'm passionate about photography, but also telling stories, and that's why I'm out here today. You know what I want to do here is is show people that there's more to this than just a desert wasteland, which is the term I hear used more often than in, you'd like to hear it. So the estimated amount of yucca that will be destroyed um, will be 90,000. 90, and think of that though too, I mean, each Mojave yucca is home to these little desert night lizards that live inside of the trunks and under the leaves. They come out at night um, nesting for cactus wrens, phoebes, um, sparrows. And I mean, this whole 3,000 acres is home to innumerable uh, native desert species, kit fox. We've seen badgers out there, they're burrowing owls. There might even be Gila monsters because the area gets some summer rain. Zebra tail lizards, desert iguanas. I mean, I could just go on and on. And most of these species have no federal protection. So they're crushed or their home is eliminated and they have to, you know, move and fend for themselves. So that's part of our mission is just to try to educate people. Look, there's life out here. There's biodiversity. This is like a really rich desert habitat. It's not a barren wasteland. So that's really part of our mission. Yeah, and here's Stump Springs. We can go over here and the old Spanish trail goes right here. I can't tell you exactly where the trail is, but this is the area. I'd have to go figure that out. But this, this is the area, so you can see it's definitely within the viewscape of the giant boulder project. And Stump Spring is a wetland. It's a um, former uh, surface water spring, but because of intense agricultural activity in the Pahrump Valley, um, it's down to kind of an underground source of water, but needless to say, um, it, it's a really good habitat for a lot of mesquite trees and um, a lot of birds, and those birds probably have a good chance of colliding with solar panels, because solar panels have been found to produce a lake-like effect that causes birds to collide with them, not unlike glass buildings that you hear about. So it's a concern to have an ecological reserve within a couple miles of a pretty big solar project. And here's the historic marker, Old Spanish Trail, 1829 to 1848. And before that, this route right here was a uh, Native American trade route. So here's a old growth Mojave yucca that was in the way of this tortoise fence. So they just tore it down and pushed it down into this wash. And this is like a, could be 300, 600 year old yucca, home to desert night lizards, um, yucca moths, beetles, probably like little snakes. And they just push it over. They don't even try to transplant it. This is related to the Joshua tree. And, um, you know, there's over 90,000 Mojave Desert Yuccas that are going to suffer this fate for energy that's not green. Yeah, we had a, a geologist uh, come out and show us that this limestone rock surface is 100,000 years old. It is had mammoths and saber-toothed cats walk on the same soil surface um, since the last ice age and before the last glacial. 100,000 years, I mean, I'm almost like hate to walk on it. It's got biological soil crust. It's keeping carbon intact in the ground. And then this is what's going to happen to it when the construction machinery comes to build the utility scale solar project. It just utterly destroys that old ancient soil rock surface and turns it into poof dust. And this is going to cause air quality issues. Um, it, all the 
carbon in the ground sequestered is then released into the atmosphere. So just picture 3,000 acres of trucks and, and bulldozers driving over this, tractor um, trailers. It's, it's just, to me, it's devastating. I mean, this beautiful Mojave Desert ecosystem turned into uh, a giant energy sprawl construction zone. This, I mean, we'll never see this soil repair ever. The surface is broken and compacted and crushed by machinery and churned up. That carbon in the soil and in the roots and fungal mycelia is released into the atmosphere. So how much carbon are we, how many, how much greenhouse gas emissions are we actually saving by constructing a solar project on a living ecosystem? I haven't gotten a good answer. Here's what I think people should know about the solar revolution in Nevada. Yellow Pine Solar is a 3,000 acre project. That's 4.6 square miles. In addition to this project, they're constructing the Trout Canyon substation nearby, which accommodates five more of these. That's 18,000 acres or 30 square miles right here in the Prump Valley, just west of Mount Charleston. Beyond that, Nevada is quickly moving forward with a massive construction project for a system of transmission lines that will accommodate millions of acres. The BLM is opening up 9 million acres of Nevada outback for solar alone. No one is opposing these projects, not even environmentalists. You have a career energy lobbyist serving in the state Senate, Chris Brooks, who's leading the charge on these projects with the full support of Governor Sisolak. And the Biden administration, with the passage of the American Jobs Act, will be bringing money to accelerate all of this. There are billions of dollars for the solar industry at stake out here. Is there any hope? I don't know. What I do know is when I made my first film a few years ago about a 300 mile long water pipeline the Southern Nevada Water Authority was trying to build we didn't stand a chance. In fact, my film was about the prayer run of native people for the land and water of the Great Basin. In a sense, all we had was a prayer. The Southern Nevada Water Authority had sunk $16 billion into this project. But someone had to speak for the animals, the ecosystems, the water. Many people did. We weren't the only ones. But our efforts made a difference. Finally, in 2020, it was announced that the project would be halted permanently. We never give up. This journey has just begun. There are amazing people doing amazing work in this state. And we plan to travel to meet these people and see these places that are threatened. Join us next time to see how an enormous area near Death Valley is threatened by solar development, including the 15 square mile Sawtooth Solar Project. Watch future episodes and learn how to get involved at desertapocalypse.com. To learn about the latest happening with solar development and other things threatening the Mojave and Great Basin, follow along at basinandrangewatch.org. Thanks for watching.